Hi everyone, welcome. We have our first live peer next video build hackathon workshop today. Uh, so the very first workshop we have is uh, brought to us by Fabio Costa, who is a dev of Push Protocol. And he's gonna be giving us a workshop on how to power your video app using Push Protocol. Uh, and after this, we will also back-to-back uh, -back have a second workshop, that one from Lent. Uh, but uh, I will hand things over to uh, Fabio, and he can introduce himself uh, and take things away. So over to you, Fabio. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, well, my name is Fabio. I am a developer at Push Protocol. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about what Push Protocol is, what problem we are solving, and most importantly, how you can integrate push protocol into your own project. So um, if, it, if anyone has been in Web3 for a while, um, there are some missing points in Web3. Um, definitely communication is one of those missing points. What I mean by this is today protocols, they expect users to go back to the protocol themselves to fast information. For example, let's say that you have a uh, you took a loan from a decentralized lending protocol. How do you know you're you're get you're about to get liquidated? Well, you actually don't know, right? If you don't actually actively keep fetching the information yourself, you're simply gonna get liquidated. It would be much easier if we get a notification whenever um, before I actually get liquidated. Whenever my collateral ratio it's uh, is not so good. If we think about it, that's how we do in Web two, right? Whenever I receive an email, it's not like I'm on Gmail all the time pressing F F5 to see if I got an email. I just receive a notification and then I click on the notification itself and then I, I redirect to the email. How did I how did I got the invitation for this presentation here? I just got a notification on my Google Calendar, then reminding me that I have this presentation. So that's how we are in Web 2. But funny story, that's not how we do in Web 3. So that's where push protocol is doing. Push protocol is building a protocol that allows to send notifications to wallet addresses, right? And the application, they can be pretty much anything. Um, as I said, it can be a risk of liquidation alert. It can be a notification whenever there is a new governance proposal. It can be a notification whenever someone sends you a message. It can be a notification whenever someone uploads a video or whenever someone uh, wants to video call you. So the solution that push protocol is building is, is an open communication layer. So that means is that anyone can simply tap into the network and fetch the not notification themselves. The notifications are completely dynamic. There is no um, restriction in what, you, what content can be sent to the notifications. The notifications can be in plain text, it can be encrypted, it can be, it can be a video, it can be um, a live stream, the notification itself. Um, it can be anything. There's no restriction whatsoever. The solution that Push Protocol is building is multi-chain. As of today, we are live on Ethereum and Polygon. It's gasless um, to send transactions. It's, you just sign a message using EIP 712. So there's no cost for sending the messages, the, the notifications, but most importantly, there, there's no, ne, there will never have a cost for the end user to receive the notifications. And it's also platform agnostic delivery because since it's an open network, anyone can simply query the nodes and fetch the notification themselves and display whatever the protocol wants to display a notification. You want to display notifi notifications on your DAP, you can. You want to display notifications on your own mobile application, you can. So we just are building the infrastructure and any protocol simply notify their users or they can display the notifications um, in whatever way fit, uh, fits best the protocol. So push protocol, we have sent over 18 million notifications. We have over 60,000 different subscribers and we have over a hundred integrations. And for the application, as I said, um, I'm, I'm super passionate about DAOs. I'm very passionate about how online communities can coordinate. So one particular application that I found super interesting is notifying users whenever there is a new governance proposal. Um, yeah, for DeFi, uh, liquidation risk alerts, or for an NFT, 
imagine an, an NFT marketplace that integrates notification, uh, integrates push uh, protocol notifications. And one application for this would be for users to get notified whenever someone places a bid on, the, on their NFT. Yeah, so as I said, we have over 100 col uh, collaborations for, for, for push protocol. Um, yeah, so pretty much for notifications for Avid, YDX, Uniswap, uh, Polygon, Graph, and Ceramic, so on, so forth. We call them uh, friends of push. Yeah, we announced in Bogota a couple weeks ago um, something called push chat. So we started with notifications. And we had developed notifications for over two years. And the next step for push protocol um, has been the vision since the beginning of the protocol. It's in it's our white paper was to do chat. But for doing chat, we, we opting to build the notification system, the notification nodes. And once the, we call them push nodes, once the push nodes, um, the notifications have been battle tested, we announced chat. Uh, it's a new product. Um, under the umbrella of push protocol products. It's a web three messaging and to encrypted and powered by notifications. Yeah, let's go for the demo then. Um, so, uh, push demos. So before anything else, so let me connect here to MetaMask. Open in MetaMask. Cool. Let me just connect here. Perfect. So this is our this is the main tab for push protocol. Cool. So the way the notifications are sent and also the way the notifications can be received is we have the concept called channels, right? And then uh, the analogy that I like to use is like YouTube channels. Um, you create a, a channel on YouTube and users, they can opt in. They can subscribe to our channel to start receiving notifications. And on Push Protocol, the, the analogy is the same. So for example, we have different channels here. For example, let's say that I'm interested, me as an end user, I am interested in receiving notifications from Earnify. If I want to get notif notified whenever earn the, this service here or protocol sends me, sends me a notification, all I have to do is click here on the opt-in button, assign a message, and perfect. Now I'll start getting notifications for, in this case, Earnify. The same for length, lens I have already opt-in opt out whenever someone makes a comment on my post. And the IGX phone to get notified by the IGX. I just send a message and then start receiving. And the notifications can be received in multiple um, places. So for example, we have here an inbox. We see I have opt-in opt to receive the uh, notifications from the cryptocurrency jobs. See, so here the, that's my inbox for the notifications, but here, all this inbox here is doing, they're just this, it's just querying the, the, the network uh, to get the notifications, but any front end can see those notifications as well. Cool, so that's the, that's from the point of view as an end user to receive the notifications, right? So now let's see, let's see from the other, for the, the other end, which is, let's say I'm a service and I want to send notifications to my users. How does it work? So for this, um, these are, mainnet uh, URL. Let's go to our testnet URL. So here we're playing with fake money. Perfect. So that's our testnet. On this wallet here, on this wallet here, I already have a channel created, as we can see here. All right. If I can, real quick, actually, I can go over the process of creating a channel. So you guys see how easy it is to create a channel. Less than 30 seconds, you can create a channel. All you need is test ETH and, and I. So let me just connect it here. Connect, perfect. So if the wallet that you have here, I have connected the, the DAP, you don't have any 
you don't have, you haven't created a channel. So all, so that's the UI you're going to be prompt. So all, as I said, all you need is if and die. So let's say that I have if and die already. All I have to so I just have to fill three informations. First one is the name of my channel. Um, demo channel. As I said, we are an Ethereum and Polygon, in this case, Gurley or Mumbai. This is a description that you can um, to be displayed to your users. Hey, happy to be here. And this is the URL for your protocol. In this case, I'll just add youtube.com. You just upload an image. Someone sent a message. Can you explain when creating a channel how to target Mumbai? Yes, I can. Um, so how to do this? Um, you create it. So if you want to create a channel on Mumbai, you just se select here Mumbai. You see, you go to staging.push.org. You connect. Yeah, I'm here on the girly. And you create a, a, a channel on girly. But you can select here Mumbai. And it's going to ask for this channel alias address. And for this, you can just take this, the, your own wallet address and paste here. So by doing this, I would create a channel on Mumbai. Let's keep this um, as it is then. So channel alias, you can just add your own wallet. And here you select Mumbai. I just create, I just need to add an image. That's the image that I selected, crop image. And when I click channel, we're gonna take this channel information, upload to IPFS, and then I just sign two transactions and then my channel will be created. Just reject because this wallet here don't have any ether. But my first wallet here, I have a channel already created and that's how the channel looks like, the UI looks like. I have a couple of delegates here. This property, I'm going to explain. Those are for sending on chain notifications. We're going to be sending notifications from smart contracts as well. We're going to go over it. So let's send notifications. Um, at first, let's send a manual notification. Um, so, actually, before I send a notification, I just want to show you guys something. Um, if I send a notification, I want to show you guys the other, the end user as well. I want to show you guys this. Let me just, because I want to opt in, I want to show you guys how to receive those notifications because I'll be sending notifications here. I want to show you guys how to receive notifications here on the other, on the other end. Agree, next, connect, girly, cool. So here on the left, I'll be sending the notifications and here on the right, I'll be receiving the notification. But as I said, to receive the notifications, I must opt in to receive notifications from this channel. And the reason for this is to prevent spam, right? So the protocol has been built from, from the start with spam prevention in mind. So how does this channel is called? That I just created. It's called demo channel, as we can see here. So I'll just copy and paste this name here. Demo channel. Here it is. That's the demo channel. Let me opt in. I'm saying to the to the network, hey, I want to receive notifications from the demo channel. I just opt in. The number of subscribers on the channel increased. And now whenever this channel receives sends a notification, I'll receive the notification. Um I just go one step further, which is not necessary, but we have a, a browser extension as well. I'm just going to log in with my browser extension so we can see the notification here as well. Okay, so I have opt-in to receive the notifications. So now we can actually send the notifications. So let's come here, we click on send notifications. So there are two types of notifications. You can notify all the subscribers of your channel. You can notify only one address or you can notify an array of addresses. For this demo, let's notify all the subscribers of our channel. So we select broadcast. For subject, I'm going to say hello world. Notification message is going to be um, 
We also provide survey content markdown that we can use this. Hey, see when you add like bold. Hey, everyone. I'm going to add a media here because I want to show you guys something. As I said, we can embed live streams into the notifications themselves. So if you can just add here, we have here the preview of the notification. Let me send the notification. You see, I'm not paying anything. So as a protocol, as a service, I just sign a message. See, I receive here on the browser the notification as well, because when I send a broadcast notification, I send also a notification to myself. So we just receive instantaneously the notification here. If I go to the other browser here and click here on the inbox, I also see the notification here. And I'm I'm playing. So in this case, I notified the live stream to my users. If I click here on the browser extension, I also see the notification here. So we just sent many notifications to your yeah many notifications but i think the the, the powerful output protocol is how you can automate the sending of notifications right so let's let me just close this notification so let's now send notifications via codes i think that's the most powerful um thing from push protocol so i have a repo here actually i mean SDK. Perfect. So all the code that I'm all the code that I'm going to be going over on this uh, workshop, literally all the code that just copied from here, by like copy line by line, docs.push.org. So I got another question here by Ahmed. So as a channel manager. Even on mainnet, I will have no cost for the service except if to die that I'm staking. Um, yes. So on even on mainnet, the only the only cost that you have is the fifty die, and also the gas fees for 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 the the transaction costs. But yeah, um, um, besides the transaction fees cost, is only the fifty die, and the reason for the fifty die is to prevent spam. The reason is only um, legit um, people that actually want to send notifications, like to align sentence, right? If that's if it's free, and one could be simply spamming the network. Gas fees for transaction costs for channel creation. Yeah, you're correct. The 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 the, 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 the all the if that you need just for transaction costs. The protocol itself only requires fifty die. So. Yeah, uh, all the, the code that we're going to be going through today, 100%, like literally all the code is here. I just copied from the documentation. So if you go to docs.push.org, here, developer docs. And in this case, we're going to be sending notifications. So we come here, send the notifications. We have multiple different ways of sending notifications. And we're going to be sending notification using the Push SDK. So I just click here. You see the code that I, I just copy and paste from here. So let's go over the code. Um, close others. So yeah, so this is pretty straightforward. So what this is doing this. So first of all, we're importing the push protocol um, SDK. So as push protocol slash SAPI. We're importing ethers and .env. The reason for .env is just because we're adding the private key here. I'm going to explain why the private key is here in the first place. And we just need ethers for signing the message. So we just need a couple of parameters for sending notification. The first one is the private key. So I, what private key is this? So when I create a channel here, the private key is going to be the private key of this wallet here, right? So whenever that, if that's the case asking for the private key, you just get from here. So we go here. 
account details and export my private key here. We need ethers because from the private key, we're gonna create a wallet object. And now we just need um, two more parameters, which is the channel we're sending the notification from and the recipient of the notification. So the channel, um, um, yeah, so the channel here is gonna be this address here. And if you pay attention, the channel address is the same address of the channel creator. So it's gonna be this address here. So I can copy from here or I can copy from here from MetaMask. Let me copy from MetaMask. So see, we're using the CAC 10 format. So it's always EIP 155, column the chain ID, column your wallet address. The reason for this is because we are multi-chain. So that's the way to, to, to identify if we're sending notifications from Gurley or from Mumbai. In this case, we're saying for Gurley, as we can see the, the chain ID number five here. But if we're sending a notification from Mumbai, you would change here from the, for the chain ID of Mumbai. I just want to check one thing. Uh, Dr. Uh, sending notifications, sending a guest list, push SDK, target. Yeah. So in this case, I have a recipient here. So I want to send a notification to this guy here on the right. So let me just copy the, his address here. Um, yeah, I'm just copying from the documentation and the type is number three. And then I can, yeah, and that's it. So, and what I'm doing here, uh, I'm just calling the send notification function from the SDK. Push API dot payloads dot send notifications. I'm sending a target notification, which is I'm notifying only one address. This is notification um, um, data, and this is the payload from the notification. Can be an image, a call to action. Yeah, let's send it. So. So notification has been sent. Let me see if I got it here. And now you can see the notifications here on the browser extension. And if I refresh the page, then we see we receive the notification here as well. And it's here as well. So we send notification via code and we just receive it. So this is how we send the notifications using the, the SDK. I see that we have a message here in chat. Let me see. The question is um, one time lifetime fee per channel. Yes, correct. The the 50 die that we pay is only once. And after that, you can send um, your notifications to your users. It's an only one time payment. Perfect. So now let's see how we can send notifications via smart contracts. That's one of the uh, one way of sending notifications that me personally I like the most because for me the concept of sending notifications from smart contract for me is super fascinating. Let's see how we can do this. So as I said, doc, docs dot push dot org developer docs. Oops, let me close this. Sending notification. We're sending notification using smart contracts. So literally just copy and paste from this. Um, but I have a repo here that I also recommend you guys take a look if you guys want. It's called Push for Hackers. And this repo is under the Ethereum Push Notification Service Organization. In this repo here, Push for Hackers, I can even add here on the chat. If you guys want to take a look on this, um, you see another question. If there are a million subscribers, do you have to add other recipient address in the code? 
that's an that's an excellent question. So if you have one million subscribers to your channel, what you can do is instead of adding the recipient here, I can just opt in the uh, comment list, and I can change the type here because the type that we sent was um, a target. So when we send the notifications manually, we saw there are three types. We can send a broadcast notification, a targeted or a subset. If I want to notify all the subscribers over my channel, I just call it broadcast. And broadcast instead of number three is number one. So by doing this, I would notify everyone, all the subscribers of my channel. That's how you would notify um, yeah, all your users. Or if you want to notify like 100 users, but you have one, one, 1 million subscribers and you just want to notify 100 users, then you would use the subset, which is number four here. And instead of recipient being just one address, you would actually add here other address. You add here an array of all the address you want to notify. So um, let me just move this to the right. If not, um, docs. Yeah, so let me go back to you. So that's the repo. So as I said, we're going to be sending notifications via smart contracts. Um, so as I said, so everything is on the docs, but I'm just going to copy from here. Um, but it's pretty much the same. So push for hackers repo. We have a, a folder called send the notifications. So yeah, one step back. This repo here contain all the code um, that were extracted from docs, but they, but they were created in a project format. So all you guys, like for hackathon, this is a great place to start. It's just like copy and paste from here because the for the front end for the front end integration, the React app has been created. Um, so it's very easy to start just building from uh, on top of this instead of um, starting from scratch. So for this, let's click on sending notifications. Um, we want to send notifications um, not from the SDK, not from set graphs, not manually, not from showrunners, but share smart contracts. Okay, so we have two contracts here. We have the OG, that's the contract has without the notifications. We're going to go to the modified contract. That's the contract. Um, I'm just copy and paste here on Remix. I'm gonna over, gonna go over this. I'm gonna explain what this coding is doing. So I pasted the code here. Let me. So the is zero, the consolidated version zero point six point two. I'm just coming here and downgraded zero point six point two. Let me just command S to compile. And the contract has been compiled. Let me just make this larger. And let's go over what this code is doing. So what this code is doing is we're importing DRC20 token from open sampling. We're defining here the interface. Um, we need this interface here because we're going to be calling the send notification function on the push smart contract. So this is just defining the function we're going to be calling. So this contract, all it's doing is I create a sample push contract, and the push contract is a ERC20 token. I add here the address from the push contract on Gurley, because we're going to be deploying this on Gurley. And on the constructor, all the constructor is doing is when this contract is deployed, we're going to be sending 1,000 tokens to the deployer. So if I deploy from this contract, I'm going to get uh, 1,000 tokens and 1,000, in this case, push tokens, but it can be whatever token you want, uh, whatever name you want to call it. And what it's doing is we're overriding the transfer function that whenever the transfer is successful, we're going to be calling the send notification function from the push contract. And the way that we, we just need three parameters to send a notification. The address we're sending the notification from, the recipient of the notification, and the, 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 the body of the notification. This body of the notification follows, as you can see, we have this um, plus signs here. And this is just the way the contract understands the, the notification payload. 
but all the information on how to set up the notification payload is on the docs. Cool. So let me just double check if the information here is correct. So first of all, we're deploying this on Gurley. So I just need to check if we're using the correct address on the push contract on Gurley. For this, I'll always head back to docs.push.org. We have here a section called Push Smart Contracts. Push contract addresses. We are on Gorelli and we want this communicator v1 staging address, which is this one. So let me just copy this. Oh, it's going to be 39788. I think that's the one I have already. I see three messages here. The first form Ahmad. The first question is from Ahmad. I see there are three types. There are types one, two, and four. Is two reserved for another case? Um, so the three, I don't remember. I think we deprecated the notification type three. Um, so that's why we jumped for one, two, and four. I can confirm this and, and come back to you later. But I think it was one way of sending a subset notification, but we deprecate it. I hope that answered the questions. So let me just copy in again. Um, that's the address in the communicator, but I think that's the address we have already got here. Yeah, so that's the address here already. Um, cool. So the only thing we need to change now is this address here, because we're sending the notification from this channel. And in this case, it's going to be just this channel here. So let me just copy. As I said before, the channel address is also the same address um, of the wallet that created a channel. So I created a channel, this channel with this wallet. So the channel address is going to be my wallet here. It's the same one as here. It's here. So let me just paste it here. And that's it. We just have two helper functions here, um, but I mean, they they don't add any value. The only value for, for send notification, just calling this. So TLGR, just send on chain notifications. All you have to do is call the send notification function from the push contract. And that's it. Okay, so the contract is ready. We had compiled the contract. Now let's deploy the contract. We're going to be deploying using the uh, the environment. It's going to be the inject provider from MetaMask. So we're going to be deploying from my account here. And we're going to be deploying the push contract. And that's it. I click on deploy. Um, so yeah, let's deploy our contract. Check the planet spinning. Click here and let this way. Yes, <laughs> that's push protocol. Cool. I just wait for the transaction to be validated. Awesome. Okay, so the transaction was validated. So let me head back to Remix. Here, okay. So we deployed our contract on Gurley. So all we have to do is just one more step, which is this. Let me close all the tabs from the right. So what we were we're doing now, we're this contract is going to be sending notifications on behalf of this channel here. So the only the next step that we need is. I need to give permission for this contract to send notifications on my behalf. Otherwise, imagine any contract will be able to send notifications on our behalf, and that will not be ideal. So for this, once the contract is deployed, I copy the contract address. I go back to the push um, DAP. Click here, add the delegate, and I add here. The contract address. Let me 
I'm gonna confirm this. Now I'm telling to push network. Um, okay, whenever this contract sends a notification on my behalf, and how do I know it's on my behalf because of this address here? The push network will allow, will allow the notifications to be sent. So the add delegate function uh, transaction was just validated. So now we should be able to send the notifications. So let's send a non chain notification. So what we're doing here to send a notification, then we need to call the transfer function. So let me come back here. I see here the transfer. So when we're going to be notifying the recipient of the token transfer. So I'm going to send the, what this code here is going to do. <clears throat> sorry. I'm going to send, for example, 50 tokens to, to a particular address. And the address is going to receive the 50 tokens and also will get notified whenever he receives the, the ERC20 token on his address. So what, what are we going to add here? And as the recipient of the token, it's going to be this address here, because this address has already opted to receive the notifications. If you send a notification to an address <clears throat> that the address has not opted to receive the notifications, the notifications will go to spam. I copy here the address. Let me send, um, I don't know, um, 300 tokens. Let me click transact and let me confirm. Yeah, now just wait. We're sending 300 tokens to this address here. And what I can do also is this. Um, I can come here, I can copy this contract code. And come here, assets, import tokens here. Yeah, just add it here in the contract. Look, so the transaction just went through. Send push. And, and look at here. You just received the notification. And you can see the notification here as well. So we just sent a long-chain notification. And, and yeah, this user just received the tokens. And also the user just got alerted that there was a deposit of ERC20 tokens on his address. So we send here a manual notification. We send a notification using the SDK and we send a notification via smart contracts, as we can see here. I see two questions on chat. Is there an estimate on how much gas the extra code for sending the push notification will cost on this mainnet? Yes, there is a way to do this. Um, I don't know how to do it myself, but yeah, there is a way to cut to know um, how much it's gonna cost it. Cool. Um, I think there's one cool way. Um, um, yeah, one way to display the notifications, but because this workshop mainly went through different ways on how you can notify your users. Um, I think it's very important as well how you how you display the notifications to your users. So for this, I have prepared also another demo for you, which is this. So all I did here, I created a basic um, React app, and the code from from this, I also came from is from the documentation. Um, so if we go docs.push.org, developer docs. What we want to do is receive notifications. Oh, sorry, it's integrating on front end because now we want to display notifications to our users. And here we want to integrate notifications and receiving the RESTful API, fetching user channel details. So the code that I'm displaying here on the front for the for the DAP. I'm just, I just also just copied from the documentation. Um, let me just start so you guys can take a look on what this app is doing and then we can go over the code, but it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so look, 
so what this app is doing here is, um, first of all, we see here, um, there are two components here. The first component is this opt-in to channel button. And here are the notifications themselves. So the reason for this is imagine you have a protocol with that and you want to, your users to opt in to receive notifications from your DAP. The, it would be, for, from a user, user experience perspective, would be way better if users could simply never leave your DAP to receive the notifications. So the reason the idea the, the is we provide you this button, then when you click it, the users can opt in to receive notifications and the users never leave your DAP to receive the notifications. So I just opt in and now I'm going to be receiving notifications from this app. And now we can also display the notifications so we can see here. But let's go over the code, how the code is doing. Um, as we can see here, that's the entire uh, application. First of all, let's see how we can display those notifications here. So we have here this notification array here. It's an array of any, let's take a look on it. Mm. So this array, it's set here. We have a set notification here and it's set here. So the way it works is we're using use effect. So whenever this component uh, renders, we're gonna be calling the get feeds function from the EPNS SDK. EPNS uh, was the previous name from push. So that's why it's called EPNS here. Um, but you can call it whatever you can call it. Um, you can call it push SDK as well. I mean, here's not important. I'm just renaming it there. Okay. So all you're doing here is I'm saying, hey, give me all the notifications from this user on the staging environment. When upon rendering, of when this component renders, we get notifications, then we set here on the notifications. Um, array, and then we take this array, we pass down to this notification component. And this notification component, I'm just, all I'm doing, I'm iterating over the notifications and then passing to the notification item, which is provided by also by the push protocol SDK. And as I said, all the code here, just copy and paste from the documentation, no change at all. Um, so yeah, I'm just iterating all the notifications passed down to this notification item component. So the notifications, they look like this on the screen. They look nice. On this time, um, here we have DYDX um, um, notifications. We have notification from this dual channel, which is probably a, a test channel. And look, it was delivered from Mumbai. So we have here notification from both Gurley and Mumbai. I think that's it. Yes, yeah, and from my side, that's it. Um, yeah, that's all I had, guys, for the demo. Um, let me just finish off. Um, yeah, so as I said before, um, we guys can, if you guys want, we are not, as I said, we are not push chat, and as of now, push chat is in alpha. And this uh, invite access only. So if you guys want to have access for push chat, uh, please let me know. Um, send a message to, to push or tag us on Twitter or send a message on Discord. So we can we can give you guys the pull app to give access to push chat. Um, yeah, we also have we have one million dollars for grants. So we fund projects that use push protocol in any way. So if you guys are building something that want to use push protocol, just apply for for a grant. And that's all. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Thank you so much, Fabio. I think that's all we have time for. I suppose we don't have time for questions, but uh, I'm sure Fabio will be happy to uh, pick those questions up uh, async after the call. Thank you so much, Fabio, for coming in. It was a super, super interesting uh, presentation, and I hope people have been inspired to uh, integrate PUSH uh, in the uh, next video build. Hackathon. So uh, thank you for coming in, Fabio. Do you have any uh, last comments? Um, no, just great. Uh, super happy, happy to be here. And thanks so much for this place and opportunity to talk about push. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, have a good day.